Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. Um, we do record the show as we are doing today and you can watch that later at your convenience. Um, I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show recordings. Uh, both the live show and the archive shows are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in the um, topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you who are not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So similar possibly to your whatever state library. Um, so we provide services and training and resources to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live um, for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives. Uh, really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Um, something cool libraries are doing. Uh, we bring um, something we think they could be doing. We do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff come on the show to do presentations about services and resources we offer through the commission. Um, we also bring in guest speakers sometimes from other libraries, universities, um, outside of Nebraska, all sorts of things. Um, and that's what we have today sort of a guest, spe guest speaker um, uh, from one of our regional library systems. <clears throat> Tammy, um, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, and she is from our Three Rivers Library System. Uh, and uh, I don't know, were you gonna explain about the regional systems or would you like me to do that just for anyone who's not aware of how they are here in Nebraska? Yeah, if you wanna give a recap, that would be great. Sure, sure. Um, so here in Nebraska, we have four what we call them regional library systems. They're geographically um, arranged. Um, there's our Western Library System, Central Plains, uh, Three Rivers is um, the northeast corner of the state, and Southeast Library System is the southeast corner of the state. And they are, um, I kind of describe them as like an outreach arm, <laughs> arms of the Nebraska Library Commission. They are funded by us. They are part of the commission, uh, kind of our boots on the ground people. Um, so in those different areas can do, they do a lot of, um, so they are part of the library commission, but also their own little individual things. They are not library systems in the sense in other states where li um, libraries join the system and become members or anything. Um, they do not have like a, shared catalogs or things like that. It's a more like an outreach of the state library in each of those areas of the state. Um, so it has a similar name, but it works differently than what you might have in other states if you're not from Nebraska. Yeah. Um, and Tammy is our Three Rivers um, Library System um, Director. And she uh, has been doing some really creative work with breakout boxes. I know a lot of people have heard of those, have used them for various things, and uh, she's done some very interesting things. I don't even know when you started, but um, with breakout boxes and uh, did this presentation at our um, one of our other library systems, Southeast Library System, does what they call their annual training extravaganza. <laughs> And um, so I invited Tammy to come on uh, Encompass Live and tell us all about um, what she's been doing and what you maybe can do with these boxes. So I will just hand it over to you, uh, Tammy, to if you want to introduce yourself more or just go ahead with your presentation. All right. Thank you, Krista. And thank you for inviting me here today because hmm. I'm really honored and I'm excited because I think that it's such an amazing learning tool, the breakout box challenges, and hmm. I love using them in all kinds of ways. So as Chris just said, I'm Tammy Thien with the Three Rivers Library System, the northeast quarter of the state. Uh, so first off, before we go into the breakout box challenges, I wanted to talk about in November of 2021, I had Dr. Melissa Cass Brady do a presentation on the importance of play for adults. Uh, Dr. Cass Brady is an, an instructor for the undergraduate pro library program at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. And she gave this fabulous presentation. The link is on the last slide and I encourage everyone to go back and watch it. Uh, so what it is, 
every all librarians already do all the cool stuff, all the fun stuff, all the engaging stuff. And so basically what she did is validates that what we do is important, it's meaningful, it's a learning tool. And it also details the importance of play and it's not just for learning, it's about life. There's, um, there's problems if you don't play in life. So librarians already know this, they already provide it. Um, and also a reminder that librarians need the chance to play too, not just provide it for everyone else. And in her presentation, she referenced the book Play, How It Shapes the Brain, Opens the Imagination, and Invigorates the Soul by Stuart Brown. I got a copy of the book. I was so excited to read it after she talked about it. And I recommend the book to everyone. I have a copy. If anyone wants to borrow it, just let me know. And again, he went, he went into the details of the different types of play and validated the importance of play. So I picked out a few of my favorite quotes and I think they are really powerful. I don't think it's too much to say that play can save your life. Play isn't the enemy of learning, it's learning's partner. When we stop playing, we start dying. Uh, the opposite play of, of play is not work, the opposite of play is depression. So like I said, these are pretty powerful sentiments that are included in this book. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is also self-care, which is a, a big thing that people talk about too. And this is one part that can be part of that self-care, which is so important. Oh, absolutely. What a great point. Um, so Dr. Brown kind of got his start in a sad way. He was pretty new at the Baylor Department of Psychiatry in 1966 when the Texas Tower Max Massacre started. Mm. Um, he was asked by the Texas governor at the time, Connolly, to look into Charles Whitman, um, Dr. Brown, and a, another team of people. Brown was an architectural engineer. He went up on the campus tower at the University of Texas in Austin and mass shooting. He killed 15 people, wounded 31. He ended up being killed by an off-duty police officer, but then they found out that he had also killed his wife and mother the night before. So when they did some research into Charles Whitman, um, the quote here was, Charlie is, an obvi is obviously an extreme example of parental over-control that they realized he didn't have any time in his whole life, in his childhood, in his developing years to do any play. Everything had to be useful. He wasn't allowed to be creative. He was totally controlled. So it really showcases the, the all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, which has its start in the 1600s. So this is something that's always been known. And of course, this is an example from the movie, The Shining. So that's a lot of basis of why we play. Um, my personal examples, Gary Gain, my fifth grade teacher, nobody's gonna know who this is, but when I think of school and play, he's the first one that came to mind. He was really ahead of his time because, um, you know, do you remember all those fun worksheets and tests that you did in school? Likely not but you remember the hands-on activities you did, the fun projects you did. Um, the example that I can think of, and again, this is um, 50 years ago, and I still remember to this day, we were, our classroom was a community. So our group was PBO Electric Company. And again, 50 years ago, and I still remember this. So we had to write checks to one another. We had to get checks. We had to balance our, our checkbooks and our ledgers and it was all hands-on and I just remember it so clearly because it was an active play learning experience and this kind of reminds me of the way they do the girl state and boys state just put a plug in for that if you're not familiar with it where they go to the dormitories at UNL and each floor is a different city I think it's every three floors or a county, the whole building is a state and they get to learn hands-on how municipalities operate and the different functions. I mean, again, what a cool idea to have hands-on things like that. Are there any questions at this point, Krista? 
Oh, you put my little box here. Um, no, I don't see anything yet. Yeah, um, anybody at any time that you want to, you can type in a question or a comment or a thought you have um, about it. And I will, I've got that box open here for the questions. Um, and I will grab that for Tammy. So yeah, um, whenever you think of anything, just go ahead and pop it in there. Okay, Nothing right we now. Will go, uh, we'll go on to the breakout EDU section then. Um, so the breakout EDU was founded in 2015 by Adam Bello, Bello, Mark Hammonds, and let's see, James Sanders in Old Beth, Beth Page. Is that how you say that, Krista? I think you're from New York. Um, yeah, Beth Page. Beth yep. Page? Okay. Yep. So it's a the private it company. Yeah, it's not a weird spell. It's not a weird one. <laughs> okay. It's a private company with 19 employees and it's considered an educational software. Um, I think these guys must be geniuses. So you can access some of the content free on Breakout EDU, but I think it's like $110 a year to be a member where you can access all the content. It's originally made for school, but instead of reinventing the wheel, you can reuse, you can use the content that others have created and shared with Breakout EDU. I personally like to make my own, but they've got a lot of great things going on there. Um, so Breakout EDU fan, founder, James Sanders, um, he designed, whoops, sorry, skipped ahead. So he designed this, these experiences after visiting these popular escape. I'm trying to read the screen and I have my, and it's on top of it. So after visiting the escape oh, rooms, uh, this is a go-to-webinar interface in, interfering with it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, a little the orange red arrow. arrow. There's a little orange arrow that'll minimize it out of your way. Thank you. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So James Sanders designed the student experiences after visiting those popular escape or puzzle rooms. So as an educator, he realized that these activities teach teamwork, problem solving, critical thinking, and troubleshooting by presenting students with challenges that ignite their natural drive to problem solve. He says on breakoutedu.com. I got this from a school library journal article. So I, and the link for that is on the last page also. I recommend you go back and read. It's a great testimony for all those buildings, um, building blocks of learning that he listed there. Um, okay, so how did I learn about breakout box challenges? I really don't remember where I originally heard, but I do remember the experience. I was at a library conference and we actually did a challenge. It was so fun and engaging. It's like, okay, I've got to get on board with this. I love it. Um, so I kind of think of these as escape rooms for smaller areas. You don't have to have the actual room. You can escape into the box type thing. Um, so it's not as sophisticated as an actual um, escape room, but you can decorate if you want to make it all a big part of it. Uh, so when I was the director at the small library in Genoa, I had gotten a grant and included the breakout box for this. So I've got a cheap toolbox and some different locks. And the first challenge I made was about zombies. And I kind of wish I would have saved them, but I was just learning. So I kind of just went with the flow and was learning as I went. So that one was fun. Um, Let's see. And another testimony to this is my daughter-in-law is in the Air Force, and they actually go to escape rooms for team building exercises. So to me, that's pretty powerful that the United States military is using these as learning tools and team building tools. So I think we're kind of on the right track. Still any questions? Nope, nothing right yet. Nope. Okay, great. And also, if anyone else has used these breakout boxes, we'd love to hear about your experiences too. I know, I know oh, a long time, a while ago, we had this presentation, and I can't remember who it was from, but I know someone who was using them. Um, but if anyone else has, um, yeah, share what you've done or your experiences too. Awesome, yes. Okay, so an actual breakout box kit, right now the price is $129. It does fluctuate because as we know, prices change. Uh, so what's included, there's a variety of 
items, the main ones are the boxes. There's a large box, a small box, a hasp that allows additional locks to be added um, to be used. There's number locks, letter locks, color locks, directional locks, symbol locks. Um, there's a black light, invisible ink pen. There's red and blue filters, there are hint books. And then the expansion pack has more things like a cipher wheel. It looks like they have some dice. I've not gotten those. I've made my own cipher wheels, but it looks like these are more things to explore. There's just always more things to learn, more things to do. So that's always exciting. Sorry, wrong way. <clears throat> so keep in mind that the systems offices have these boxes that you can borrow. All four of us have them. Yep. So it can kind of be a try before you buy if you don't want to spend $129 without knowing if you want to do these, actually use these often, you can borrow them. And maybe you'll decide to buy them. Maybe you'll just decide to borrow them every time you want to use them. It's all good. That's kind of what we do at the systems is help libraries where we can. Um, at the Three Rivers Library System, I've actually gotten some extra locks because um, I seem to like to use the word locks a lot and they don't have enough in the basic. I think that's a librarian in me that I use words a lot. Okay, so a closer look at the locks. Uh, the locks themselves cost $15. The extra wheels that you get would cost $6. So um, there's the blue part on the right where the lock swivels into it. If you turn that a quarter turn, that comes off, the wheels slide off, and you can ch easily change the letter or the word that you're choosing for your code. And you can kind of see the gray one has notches. So the gray ones are the first one that holds it into place better. The old ones, they're all black, but still have notches. The newer ones, they just made it gray for easiest, easier to identify. So I've used the colors, the directions, the letters, of course. I have not used the symbols much, but I wonder if the shapes might be fun for preschool, maybe. And I haven't used the numbers on these a whole lot because there are different number locks that we'll see in the next slide. So here it gives a clearer picture of the hasp and there's paddle lock and key, obviously, and then the number locks. So there's a three digit and a four digit. The numbers line up on the edges. So it's really easy to change the code. You press down on the, on the lock and turn it, and then you can change your code and then you release it back up again and your new code is saved. So that's really easy. I like using the paddle lock and key for like scavenger hunts um, to make them work consistently. I've kind of gotten predictable because you vision, envision a library and most libraries will have a clock a chair, a table, a bathroom, a door. So those would be easy places to hide them. You don't know if all libraries are going to have the same thing, but those are pretty consistent. So if you make it in your own library, you can be more creative, use more things more specific for your own library. For example, when I was in Genoa, all the kids got tape measures. And so there was a starting point on the bookshelf and then they used the tape measure to find the next clue that was hidden in books. And I remember every title of the book had the word summer in it. So they got to the extra learning experience of using a tape measure, but then they all got to take the tape measures home. So that one was fun. Uh, so, you, so you can see the prices of these, the $10 for the HASP. And I always make sure to, call it by name for the kids, another learning opportunity. The paddle lock 750, the three digit lock 750, the four digit locks 850. And of course, this is timely, the prices may go up. So some of these, um, this is the price if it's added, but most of these are included in the original kit. Any questions yet, Krista, or just nope. keep on going? Yep. Okay. Okay, so here is the link for the challenge that challenges that I have made for kids program. Just keep in mind it's a working file that I may have started on one and not completed it. I may have one in progress that I only have a few clues because 
uh, yeah, I work on them a little bit and then I go on to other things that are a little, mm -hmm. I just kind of do this here and there. But you I will mention while you're, while you're showing this here that um, afterwards uh, you will have everyone will have a link to these slides as well. So um, if you don't grab this right now, that's okay. Um, you'll have the link. You'll have the QR code later um, when we put up the archive, um, which will be probably tomorrow. Um, and then you can always pop back here to get the um, get to the link. Awesome. Thank you, Krista. Yeah. So um, you can are welcome to use these if they work for you great if you'll just want to pick and choose or if you just want to skim through them and get ideas that's great too so just imagine the, the possibilities how would you use it i always jot down ideas i'll think of something oh that would make a cool breakout box challenge so i'll jot it down and then i don't spend a huge amount of time working on these but it's a nice break from some of the different things I do, like state statutes, policies, you know, different fun things. Sometimes it's fun to have a nice creative outlook, mm -hmm. outlet for doing things like this. So some of the things that I have actually made, uh, Greek mythology. These are some of my favorite. I love Greek mythology. I've just done the two so far, but I would like to make more. Um, I found some nice, short, clear stories online. They're it seems like the wording is great for like a third, fourth, fifth grader. They're pretty straightforward. I print them so it's just front and back, two sided, about eight paragraphs. So you can either read them aloud or have the kids take turns reading them aloud, or they could read silently if you so choose. And so the clues that I made to go with these are all kind of comprehensive questions that tie in with the stories. So if they read and understood the story, they should be able to open the box easily enough. So like I said, I've just got these two for mythology, but I wanna make some more. This one is another one of my favorites about Nebraska trivia, Nebraska information. Uh, for example, the very first question is, what year did Nebraska become a state? Well, then the answer is 1867, it'll open the lock and that's no. their start. Um, the kids all get their own Nebraska map. These are free from the state. And then I also print out a two page document that gives all the basic information like the Nebraska state mammal, um, state flower and so on, which are all part of the questions. And then they get to learn how to use the legend at the bottom of the map to find the different cities. And then they use the directional lock to, after they identified the cities to show if they would go and, and explain too that North represents uh, those kinds of things that may not be common knowledge for those new at using a map. Mm. And I'm always excited when I realize that kids do love maps. So that's kind of <laughs> validating to me. Too. You think everyone's using, you know, GPS on their phones, but. <laughs> yeah, maps. kids love maps. It's so fun to watch. And so this is especially fun for fourth graders in Nebraska because they're generally learning Nebraska history at that time and they can usually rock these answer them and they feel so proud because they know it all. Another way I have used it is book clubs, um, some of the book sets that the systems have. Uh, kind of made I've actually read the book so that's either a downside or upside, depending on how you look at it. But this is more of a comprehensive type thing. If they read the book, they should be able to answer it pretty readily. So, and these haven't been as popular as I, I was hoping they would be, but it's a good learning tool for me. And hopefully someone sometime will use them. And another way I've done this is with summer reading. Because as we know, the collaborative summer library program they have a different theme each year so so far i have made one for oceans one for kindness there was one for camping which tied in um, with the i read last year there's one for adventure um, i used pirate this year that tied into the adventure theme so next year's is color our world so i'll need to make one for that that should be a fun opportunity Still no questions? Uh, nope, nope. Okay. Okay, so kids, 
they have all the fun, right? But according to the training with Dr. Melissa Cass Brady, and according to the book by Stuart Brown, um, adults need play too. So you could do like staff training. I've never actually done that, but I think that would be fun. There's always content. And I'm actually in my mind, it's got me thinking, how could I tie this in with workshops? I've used it for like, learn about the Three Rivers Library System. I've done that like at our annual meeting, but I wonder if it could actually work for like workshop content. So I'm kind of thinking about how that might work. And so back to using it in your library though, if you think about any staff training exercise. So if it's good for building teamwork, if the United States military uses it, how could you use something like this for staff training? I think that would be fun. And then the actuals on the screen here, these are from library board challenges that I've created. Which talking about those, um, I've created two different challenges so far, and I'm working on two more for library board training. So the first one uses the United for Libraries tools for trustee information. I print them all out for everyone. I include the accreditation, accreditation sample form. So the library board members get to take these home. Maybe they already have copies, but this uh, brings it fresh into their minds. And I have been approved by the Nebraska Library Commission that these are worth continuing education credits. So I will take these to library boards and spend 45 minutes to an hour doing the challenges. It opens the doors for any questions and kind of builds relationships. And again, it's valuable reading for them. So I, I tell the board members that I'm actually tricking them into reading the content. And I had one board member say, they admitted that I read more of this information just doing the crossword puzzle than I probably would have if I would have brought the information home to read on my own. Mm -hmm. And it's sad, but it's likely true because life's busy and it's not necessarily light fun reading, but. And this is what, you know, this is how education works and training, you know, with that. And, and when you're a kid, you, you were saying about you, what do you remember? Do you remember the tests and things or do you remember the fun things? Well, those fun things were actually education. They were a sneaky way of teaching you things and you just didn't realize it. <laughs> I know, isn't it fun to trick people like that? <laughs> so the two I've worked on so far are, um, United for Libraries Tools for Trustee. And then the second challenge is a 73 page Nebraska Library Board Manual, which again, it's valuable reading. And if you can trick them into reading part of it, at least that's better than none. And the ones that I'm working on now, kind of work in progress are the Nebraska State Statutes and one for the Nebraska Open Meetings Act. Mm -hmm. And it also helps too, even if they don't read the entire thing that you're leading them to, they now know that that resource exists. Too. Right. And, I, and that's something we struggle a lot with our boards and directors is, did you know that there was this whole doc, this whole manual that we put together to help you and help your board? And many times, you know, you have staff turnover, new directors, of course, there's always, you know, uh, board turnover. Um, it's always a good reminder that these things are out there. Yeah. Right. The one I did, I did one Monday night in Waterloo and one of the questions refers to the directory showing you where you can find the different things within the manual and someone pointed out, oh, if I wanted to just find something, it should lead me right to it. So again, that awareness, just like you said. Yeah. Um, so these, I do not have a link to access for everyone. I kind of hold them dear to my heart because, you know, they are used as training and CE credits and building those relationships. So I don't have them just available for everyone, but I, I have used them a lot and I'm excited to get the next two done so that I have more uh, flexibility and availability for them. Any questions before I go, go on? No? Uh, nope. If anybody does have any questions, use that question section, type in there. Okay, so the types of challenges and clues, like, you, like I said, if you go to breakout EDU, there's so many different kinds. 
the ones I prefer that I do word searches, crosswords, cryptograms, pig pen ciphers, uh, scavenger hunts, a question answer is kind of for comprehension, mazes. I mean, really the options are unlimited and I still learn as I go and I come up with different ideas that I think would be so cool. Uh, for example, there's, um, there's a flash drive. I've never used that. I'm, I'm trying to think how that would work. So I'll have to give it some thought. And same with the red and blue filters. I've never used those and I've never used like hint cards. So I kind of need to explore how to use that. Invisible inks with the black lights, but even adults get a kick out of having words glow all of a sudden. Uh, so some tips, I laminate the clues. I usually make 10 copies for the kids. Um, so dry erase markers, they can just be used and it makes them reusable. You just wipe them off and use them again. A yellow highlighter on yellow paper glows with a black light. A couple other hints, um, colored dry erase markers, they seem to st stain the laminate. So that's frustrating. And a weird tip is Arm & Hammer laundry soap. If you dilute it and use a Q-tip, it glows in the dark. You can just with a black light. So I did kind not of, know that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, who knew, right? Okay. Okay, so like I said, I make a challenge for every year's summer reading themes. And this year is adventure. So we can take a closer look at this. They can be done in any order. I try to make it that some clues are harder than others because if they're all too easy, it's no fun. And if they're all too hard, it gets frustrating. So I usually kind of start with an easy one, then it builds confidence, but it doesn't really matter what order they go into. So uh, the first one I'm pointing out here is a word search. All of the words are synonyms of the word adventure. And I noticed when I did this presentation, I wrote it backwards because you should read the remaining letters from left to right, top to bottom. Then it, you can find a, a clue for the five digit letter lock. So after you find all these words, the letters you do not cross off read something about the adventures of Huckleberry Finn and the adventures of Tom Sawyer are books written by the author Mark blank. So the only thing I'm concerned about this is, oh gosh, am I showing my age? Do kids these age know who Mark Twain is? So far they have, but we'll see. I'm going to be doing this in the next year. read week. or taught in school, yeah. Yeah, so I hope so far they have. I've got a few more of these I'm doing because I actually go to libraries and help do this. Summers are busy with summer reading, so I don't do a whole lot of workshops. So this um, is a fun opportunity for me to get my kid fix and help libraries. Uh, so the next one is a cryptogram. So some basic reminders you can give the kids if there's a single letter, it's A or I. If E is the most commonly used letter, so it doesn't always hold true, but it often does. And three letter words are often the or and. And if they don't get it right, they can erase it and try again. Uh, so on this one, if they seem to be struggling, you can give them a hint. Like the first word is an article in grammar. Well, most kids know what it means, but if not, it's a learning opportunity that, oh, it would be like the word an or the is an article. And then that can give them some clues to move on. Uh, the next one, math, I always kid the kid the kids that, hey, you're so lucky you get to do math during break and some of them groan and some of them are like, yes, I love math. So this one's just a basic word problem with um, subtraction opens a three digit lock. And then another math problem, this is addition, you think of things you need to bring along for a long hike. How much do you spend all together? Um, and that's one thing you have to kind of be careful with math. If you have too young of kids that have not yet experienced multiplication division, it'll be frustrating for them. And same with order of operations. So if they know it, it's fun practice. If they don't know it, it's a frustration. So you kind of have to be a little careful. 
And then on this one too, it's more math. I didn't realize how much math I had in there, but this is more of a logical thinking question. Uh, because if the colors represent the digits one through five, well, you have two purple and two red. So that means they can only be one or two. Well, if purple's the solution for one, you're, anyway, you have to realize, I guess, that two purple, mm -hmm. purple can only be two or four, which means it would have to be two, which would mean that green has to be less than five. And so you can answer the color lock that way. So yeah, I think that's the kind are, of math. That, I'm not a math person either. I'm with those those kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of one that we can maybe go ow. <laughs> well, this one's more of a logic, and mm. and once you once you get it, you get it. It's mm. um, built confident. And this one goes with the cipher cipher wheel that I had made. Each of those characters mm. represents a letter, and so you test the wheel and. Uh, say, for example, you try the letter R on the first one, well, then the next letters may not make sense. So you know that that can't be right. So it's a lot of process of elimination. Once you've gotten it lined up, you don't move the wheel, you just identify the next letter that goes in. Um, one thing I realized on this, apparently more kids need pen pals because they kind of struggled with the riddle. It's what travels around the world but stays in the corner. And the answer is stamp. I give away the answer. And mm -hmm. kids just seem really puzzled. And but it's a letter, it travels, and so they need more <laughs> pen pals. <laughs> Again, maybe I'm showing my age, some of these. Okay, so what's inside the box? Kids always want to know what's in there, what's in there. So you can put prizes in it. Uh, candy's fun, buttons, you know, I love my library or fun, fun buttons, kids like those. Uh, you can do put a poster in there like the We Rock and then they can all hold it up to get a photo op to explain what they did. Um, for the board members, I usually put like Werther's candy. Chocolate would be good, but I'd hate to have it all melt before I got there. So. so yes, it's always fun to have prizes. And I think that is it. Were there any questions or discussions or any thoughts on how you would use it? Mm, don't know anything here yet. All right, I'm just bringing my boxes over here. Yeah, does anybody have any wanna, um, questions? Anything you want to know more about? Um, anything you want to see more of about how these things work? Um, has anybody else used this and uh, use breakout boxes in their libraries for anything? I'd love to hear um, how you've been um, using it. I've never had the opportunity to do any of these before or or a uh, escape room. <laughs> it just hasn't come up, but um, I think they could be a lot of fun or a lot of frustration, <laughs> depending, I guess, on the, but you have a team to do these really, I mean, so. Right, and it is more fun, even for the library board, when they realize they can do it together, it makes it more fun, more interactive. Um, and I, maybe they're all being kind, but every time I've done a breakout box challenge for a library board, I've always gotten really positive feedback, which mm -hmm. is very validating and exciting. Oh, of course, yeah. And I really appreciate that you're doing that too and getting them more into looking at, you know, everything they need to know about being a board, because that is something that a lot of libraries struggle with. Maybe some of you out there in the audience struggle with your boards, um, of them knowing what they're, what they're, how, what their job is as a board member um and how do you get that across to them i mean yeah we have a library board manual but that's kind of boring just to sit down and read through that whole thing it, it's not like an entertaining book or anything it's it's very dry um but it is what it is but if you can get it make it a little more interesting or talk about something like this i think it definitely makes it like oh well here's some a resource i can use if i wonder you know what do we do in this situation or are we allowed to do this or what is our job related to this um i have a place where i know i can go yeah 
Um, so I just have a question about this, the reusability of this. So pretty much everything is just, re, you know, except for like the prizes, the consumable prizes and stuff. Um, all those costs would be a one-time uh, cost to get things started, correct? Right. And, and like I said, the systems have the boxes. You can, if you're only using it a couple times a year, you could borrow them. If you mm -hmm. wanted to use it more, you could try it before you buy it. Right. And yes, then to print and laminate, um, mm -hmm. that's a one and a one done, and then you can wipe it clean and use it over and over again. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, um, yeah, the reusability of it I think is important, and this is the kind of thing too that like you said is a one-time purchase. Um, if you need to, if you do want to, yeah, here in Nebraska, definitely reach out to you, whichever is your regional system and ask to borrow the boxes, um, just as you know, just use or just to test it out. But then if you want to make it more of something in your um, library, uh, then you would have to purchase your own. Um, you could definitely apply for grants for the cost of it. I think we've had, we've given out grants before here from the Library Commission. Um, either we have our Youth Grants for Excellence, if you're doing something for children or teens, um, or our uh, Library Improvement Grants, would, it would definitely be something that would be eligible for that if you're doing something for adults or for your library board, or for your own staff development days, if you're doing that kind of thing for your own library um, employees. A library improvement grant you can apply for to us here at the Library Commission. So if you're in Nebraska and you want help with the cost of that, definitely uh, think about that. Um, grants will be opening in the fall as they usually do for next year. So if you're thinking of that kind of planning, you know, test out one from one of the systems first, and then in the fall when we open up our grant applications, you could um, submit an application for whatever your program or you're going to whatever you're going to be using it for. And I know there are some libraries that have more than one box and then they have competitions with the kids um, to see who can be fastest. Mm -hmm. So another addition to the play. There's some good comments here that I was just reading too. <laughs> I had to stop myself from blurting out the answers. <laughs> right, I asked for testimonials. I felt like I was fishing for compliments, but it's nice. Uh, Again, it's validating for those people who have already used it. Mm -hmm. um, and put a plug out there. If you're in the Three Rivers Library System, um, you can borrow the content, but you can, if you want me to come do the program for your library board, I would happily do that. Or if you have a children's program that one of these would fit, um, I visit libraries anyway. This would be a good way for me to come connect with you. Yeah. Yeah, and mentioning the the hours for accreditation, that is something we have for those of you not from Nebraska aware of. We have in Nebraska, we have both we have an accreditation program for our public libraries that they can become accredited um, if they go through a certain pro, um, submit an application form and a certain um, uh, criteria they have to meet, some minimum requirements. And we also have certification programs for our library staff and our library boards. Um, in order for a library to be accredited, and the benefit of being accredited is um, you get to brag about, hey, we're accredited at this level, we, we, did, we met all these criteria, checked um, all of these uh, guidelines, um, but you also receive funding, additional funding, you're eligible to apply for our grants if you're accredited, you have to be accredited. Um, to receive state aid from us, you need to be accredited. Um, but two of the criteria of the minimum qualifications, and I think I saw that on one of your quizzes there earlier, is that both your library director and your board are certified. And both of those things require doing a certain number of continuing education hours, CE hours, um, in a, in a, in a three-year period. And I know a lot of our um, boards and staff do struggle with that, and you know, just, just doing their job, doing this as well. But um, as it mentions here, yeah, definitely, if you're looking for hours for your credit for your board, uh, have one of the system directors come and do these, or um, if you as a library director work with your board on doing one of these, that would count too. It's, it's a learning experience. It's not just a regular, ha whole, have, just having a board meeting and doing your job, you don't earn CE for continuing education for that, but for educational type things, learning how to do your job as a board member. Yes. <laughs> um, and I just thinking about that, I, um, I would say that library staff, if you wanted to use this to train your staff on certain things too, if you could come up with 
quizzes or educational things that are related to training a new librarian, um, a new intern or a new uh, assistant or something, uh, definitely keep track of the time of that. And you could submit that to um, Holly Duggan, our CE coordinator, to her. that's an educational thing, <laughs> um, you know, learning how to do your job, um, attending classes, attending workshops, um, going to, you know, attending library classes, you know, college classes that are for library work. Those are all eligible for continuing education credits. If this is doing the same thing, education. And as you said, you, you've already checked in with Holly about it, uh, that yes, it is approved for earning CE. All right, you get valuable information out to people in a fun way and you trick mm -hmm. them into reading some of it. Yeah. Oh, we got comments saying, oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to maybe use that. So, uh, and I, I don't know if these people are in your area or not, but uh, you may be hearing from some more people or uh, there are other systems. But. Yeah, awesome. I think it's fun. I think it's an exciting um, way to make learning fun. So it's mm -hmm. good to get word out there. Absolutely. All right. And then my and references. Yeah. Yeah, here's some reference here you want to talk about what you've got here, these links you've got, yeah. Yeah, go back and watch the recording of Melissa, Dr. Cass, or Dr. Melissa Cass Brady, and if you ever get a chance to hear any of her, um, any of her workshops or trainings do, because she makes everything interesting. Even stuff like copyright, she makes so interesting, so. And I do have a copy of the book if anyone wants to borrow it, um, you're more than welcome to. Oh, the play, How It Shapes the Brain? Yes. Yep. Yeah. And yes, Breakout EDU. Uh, explore it a little bit. See what you think. There's because mm -hmm. you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of people who have already added content. Although I, I enjoy making them. That's how I do my play. <laughs> Get your brain working, definitely. Yeah. Right. A creative outlet. All right. Uh, as I said earlier, these slides will, in case anyone wasn't here before, um, when I mentioned it uh, earlier, these slides will be available afterwards. So all of these links here, don't try and write all that stuff down. All of those YouTube, you know, letters and numbers. Uh, you'll have the slides available to you afterwards. Uh, Tammy's already sent me the link. So um, when the archive is up and posted, you'll be able to have access to all of this. All right, I think if nobody has any other questions, if you have any other questions, get them into the questions section. Um, is that your final slide there, Tammy? I didn't want to jump. It, it is my final slide. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, all right, thank you. Um, I'm going to pull presenter control to my screen um, while I do my wrap up, but we'll stay on here. If anyone has any questions, I'm just going to do a little, my usual show. Uh, reminders and everything here. But um, if you have any questions, any comments, if you've used a breakout you do or something in your library or school, um, go ahead and type in the question section. Um, we have plenty of time and we will um, answer them. But I wanted to let you all know how this is gonna work here. As I said earlier, we are recording the show and it will be available on our website. If you use your search engine of choice, whatever you use and type in Encompass Live, the name of the show, you'll come up with the link to our main page and our archive page. Um, this is our upcoming shows that we have for the next couple of months, but right underneath our upcoming shows is a link to our archives. The previous one is um, here. We were off last week, so it was um, two weeks ago was the last show. Uh, and uh, the most recent ones at the top of the list. So today's show will be here at the top of the list. It should be, um, everything should be processed and done as long as go to webinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Uh, by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest, uh, I'll add it here. Um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's ready. Uh, we also push that information out on our mailing list that we have here in Nebraska. Um, onto our social media. We do use Twitter and the hashtag. Uh, we have a Facebook page. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like. <laughs> um, over here, we here's a reminder to uh, log in for today's show. 
introducing our presenters, and then here is the previous one when we announced when the recording is available. Um, as I said, we also pushed that on Twitter. We use NCOMP Live, a little abbreviation for the show name, um, hashtag abbreviation for when we post anything elsewhere. Um, so you can keep an eye on that out there. Uh, there will be um, a link to the recording. Like I said, we use YouTube to host all of our uh, show archives and a link to the presentation slides, which the ones this week um, happen to be on Canva. Uh, and I have Tammy's link to that. Yes, that I will um, put in the recording, the archive page for today's show. Uh, while I'm here, I'll show you there is a search feature if you want to search our show archives to see if we've done a show on any topic you may be interested in. Um, you can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something just current. Um, and that is, we have that filter um, because this is our full show archives. And I'm not going to scroll all the way down. If you look over here, you can see this is a really tiny scroll bar because this is our full show archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So we were in our 16th year of the show, sweet 16. <laughs> uh, and we have all of our show archives here. Everything is in our YouTube channel. So um, do be just pay attention when you are watching any old shows to the original broadcast date. Uh, some shows may be fine um, and perfectly fine to watch, stand the test of time, be good, still useful information, um, and that's great, but some things may become old and outdated. Uh, resources or services may have changed drastically or might not exist anymore. Um, links might be broken. We don't always have the time, you know, staff here to go back and double check links necessarily all the time. Uh, people may work in a completely different library than when they presented to us um, before, before. So um, just be aware and pay attention to that original broadcast, broadcast date if you do watch any of our older shows. Um, but uh, we will always have these available no matter how old they get. Um, that's something libraries do, keeping things for historical purposes often. And as long as we have a place to um, hold them, host them, which right now is our YouTube channel, we will always keep them out there and available to you. Yeah. All right, um, we do have a comment here, actually. I love having Tammy come do breakout boxes at my library. Um, so it's obviously a Nebraska librarian. Uh, some of the kids work so hard on figuring out the puzzles, so when they figure it out and get to open the lock, it's a huge confidence booster. That's a thing too for some kids that might be struggling in that area. Absolutely. That's great. Thank you, Kimberly. All right. So does anybody have any last minute desperate questions you want to ask of Tammy before we do actually wrap things up here? Type into the question section. Any comments? Is any else anyone else use breakout boxes? Any last words you want to share, uh, Tammy, before we wrap things up? I was just going to remind everyone, my email address is on the first slide if anyone has any questions or or comments or mm -hmm. or want to share any that they have done, maybe, because I right. learn every day. So I love to hear the different ideas. I, yeah, I'm going to change it. I'm going to add a link to your system web page here too on when I update this um, for the archive page. Uh, so people will also jump right to your website. But I'll also show you if you go to our main Library Commission website, just go to nlc.nebraska.gov. We do have a flyout menu here about our regional library systems and with links to all four of the systems. So, um, and there is, just so you know, a map so you can figure out which one you're in if you're not sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and we do have an interactive map of all, all the public um, libraries in the state showing which system they are all in. So, um, and we all like each other and work really well together yeah. and all have our own strength. No, they all, yeah, they share, everybody shares and, and whatnot. So, so you can see, you know, look up and see, you know, if you just hover over, it'll tell you which the library is. And if you click on it, I think you get a little bit more information about the library. But if you want to see which which system you are in, uh, you can use this map. So many cool tools on the website. 
And then you can see here is information about our four systems, links to each of their pages and who their directors and other staff, additional staff are. And newsletters, such valuable yes, and, information yes. in all the newsletters. Mm -hmm. Each system has their own newsletter with um, sometimes reporting things that we do here at the commission, but uh, mostly a lot of local to um, things happening in that system um, or at libraries in that system, each system. Yeah. Valuable information no matter where you're from. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's all out there, public, yeah. All right, I don't see other questions coming in. I think that will wrap it up. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Thank you so much for sharing this with us, Tammy. I'm glad to um, get this here on Encompass Live and share it beyond the, um, just the libraries you've been working with. Awesome. Thank you for having me. This was fun. Yeah. Um, and so next thing, hope you see we've got our upcoming shows, um, July, August. Um, is August almost filled in and we're even getting September, some September dates um, here. Uh, so keep an eye on other shows we have coming up. Next week, um, we are talking about E-Rate and I will be the presenter. So just me um, talking about um, what's coming up for the upcoming funding year for E-Rate. So if you're a public library and you do E-Rate or you are interested in doing E-Rate, this is gonna be a short one hour overview of just the basics of, this, of the program, getting discounts on your internet access um, and any connections for getting your internet access. Uh, we'll talk about anything new coming up for the new funding year for, this is for getting your discounts in 2025. Uh, there will be longer workshops later in the fall. I usually do a full, full blown three hour workshops um, on um, E-Rate um, as we get farther into um, the, the application part of the E-Rate process. Um, but this is just going to be a nice basic overview. So if you're just interested in the short info, uh, we want maybe we want a board member or someone who is um, uh, someone in your city administration who wants to know what is this that you do, what's all about. This will be the quickie thing, just an hour long for um, them to just get a nice idea about what E-rate is all about. So please do register for that show or any of our other show upcoming shows we have on Encompass Live. All right. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good to see you, Tammy. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see all of you, um, some of you on a, a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.